Well, Forrester uh, always does a great job of sort of soliciting and pulling out of the, uh, the, the folks they interview, sort of the, the real feeling of what's going on in the industry. And I think two main things came out of the study from my perspective. First and foremost, um, we have empirical evidence that uh, advertisers and agencies understand and value addressable TV. And so, I mean, that's, that's fantastic. You know, it's not as if we have to you know, persuade them that addressable TV is valuable. They, they know that, that was clear. The second thing that came out of it was, uh, it really highlighted the complexities of what it takes to execute uh, an addressable campaign. Uh, and particularly with regards to the various distribution footprints that uh, addressable TV runs on. Each of those different delivery systems have unique characteristics. Um, and quite frankly, that's exactly where Canoe shines. What we are able to do is we work across multiple MVPDs, across footprints and aggregate together and really hide a lot of that complexity for our client who is the national programmer. We refer to that as the Canoe simplification layer. So could you explain a little bit about the Canoe platform, uh, what you guys are doing and how you work with the programmers? Yep, absolutely. So Canoe enables on addressability for national programmers. And we do that across uh, their linear inventory as well as their set-top box VOD inventory. So the way we do that is we aggregate multiple distributor footprints. Uh, today that includes Charter, Comcast, and Cox. And so we have in our footprint, we have 22 and a half million linear enabled households uh, and 34 million VOD enabled households. So really, what we do is we provide for the programmer a one-stop shop service from very beginning of their campaign all the way through to the end. So for example, helping with understanding what the audience target segmentation data is, and we map that segmentation data to our footprint, to the MVPD footprint, and then we distribute that targeting criteria to the programmer's ad decision server so that they can actually do the targeting. And then when the campaign is done, we also will take the ad exposure files so the, the households that actually saw the ad, we bundle those up and we'll ship those off to an attribution vendor so that the programmer can get an ROI study. So uh, from the beginning to the end and everything in between, we provide the enablement uh, for national programmers to run uh, addressable TV. So David, coming from the programmer side, what are they, you know, what is their approach to addressability? Um, you know, what are the problems they wanna solve? And moreover, how much inventory can be, will be available through this addressable scenario? Well, sure. So coming from, you know, spending five years at, uh, at Warner Media, we did some wonderful uh, addressable work there. And, and as you know, the industry has moved from primarily selling on Nielsen demo to more recently selling audience-based buying, which is uh, effectively indexing. So uh, we would take a, a single uh, ad unit and we would put a, a targeted creative in there, but the same creative went to the entire country. That's great and there's a wonderful business there, but what we really aspire to is to be able to take that single unit and dynamically serve different creative uh, into it based on the, the audience segmentation. So that's what we call addressable TV. And that's where uh, large programmers like Warner Media and others now are really starting to, to move forward. And you're gonna see that in this year's upfront, uh, the use of targeting, the use of robust data and even attribution is going to play a key role in the upfront sales strategies for, for programmers, not only you know, what their sales strategy is, but they're actually thinking about how addressable TV fits the needs of their client, the advertiser, how it fits into their marketing and, and business plans. So the inventory that we're talking about here is two, two types. First, it's the, the linear inventory. So the programmer's 14 minutes an hour. We are enabling that, uh, but we're also enabling set-top box VOD. And I consider set-top box VOD to be the best kept secret of advanced television in that it is fully scaled today, right out of the gate. It is fully robust, feature rich, right out of the gate. Everything you can do on dynamic ad insertion in VOD, which we've been doing for 10 years, uh, frequency capping, uh, pacing controls, all of that is available right out of the gate across 34 million households. So uh, the inventory there, we serve, for example, 2 billion 
uh, impressions every month on set-top box VOD. So there is scale uh, available right now on Vaughn. Great, and um, David, what do you see as the road ahead for, for Canoe and for the industry more broadly uh, over the next 12 months or so? Right, right. Well, we're working hard with a lot of major programmers to get them onboarded, get them lit up, uh, and it is crawl, walk, run. I mean, we're not able to light up all 14 minutes of their inventory immediately, but we're starting. And what you'll see again in, in the, uh, the upfront season, I think addressability will have a key role. So that'll sort of be a catalyst then uh, to continue with sort of this momentum that's building around on addressability. Our role, Canoe's role, uh, we'll do what we do best, which is we pull together all of the constituents of the, uh, of the industry. So the MVPDs, vendors, partners, other constituents, we pull them together and we help the programmer effectively build a business uh, rather than going to each individual uh, partner by themselves, they come to, they come to Canoe. Uh, we will explain to them the constraints, the technology, We'll do it in very plain English, uh, straightforward, so they understand how to take advantage of uh, the capability that we have today, plus you know, where the roadmap is going and how they'll be able to scale in the future. 